Hi, I am Adelina. I do study with me live streams and I also do other types of motivation content. Welcome to my channel. Today, I thought I would talk about controlling overthinking while you are studying. Every single live stream I do, this question comes up because it seems to be like many of you struggle with this and many of you ask me how I deal with it. And today I thought I would share the three steps that I do go through to control overthinking when I am studying. Now, I interpret this question as when you guys sit down to study, you actually can't focus on the task because you get these kind of automatic, intrusive thoughts that hinder you from actually being able to focus. So I thought it, I thought that I could share my experience because I'm definitely a person who is prone to anxiety and during the winter months I had a personal decline from October to the end of December and I had to find tools for myself to kind of control my anxiety, to control my overthinking and to do emotional regulation. I got a recommendation by a professional it is called social phobia social anxiety effective help with cbt that is obviously the english translation by thomas formark annelie holmstrom elizabeth spartan etc for is especially tailored to social phobia but i found it very helpful for all, for for generalized anxiety as well the exercises I will talk about will be from this book. The general mindset tricks I will talk about will mostly be from this book. So I have organized this, the three steps I want to uh, wanna introduce to you in the way that the first step is kind of the mindset and how I changed my perspective when it comes to overthinking. In the past, I used to use single-handedly one method and that was pushing the thoughts away and I have realized that is not very effective because they just grow stronger so first I just want to share the general mindset perspectives I have adopted with you afterwards I will share exercise two exercises but I'm of the opinion that we often need kind of the philosophy behind something. We need to know the purpose before we adopt a new habit. And I essentially am recommending here for you to take these exercises as a habit. But first, let's begin with the kind of general mindsets I have adopted. And number one, is that I now think of emotional regulation. I have three mindset tricks, perspectives I'm going to talk about before I move on to the exercises. But first off, my perspective changed in the aspect that I no longer view emotional regulation as a one-time thing. I used to view it as something you gain and actually and then it stays with you forever unfortunately that is not the case and emotional regulation has to be something of our day to day so i got this tip from the book the power of when by Do sleep doctor michael bruce and it is it's going to sound funny it is to schedule time to actually worry. So you sk basically schedule this time in your day when you're going to worry about everything. Everything you want to worry about, you're going to worry during that time. So that means when you sit down to study, 
you write down the thoughts that come to you, the intrusive thoughts that come to you during study, you write them down on the piece of paper or a notebook that you look at during the scheduled time for worry. It could be half an hour after dinner, whatever suits you the best. And since I started viewing it that way, I kind of, when I sit down to study, I know I don't need to entertain the intrusive thoughts that come to me at the moment when I'm sitting down to study because I know I have a scheduled time to deal with them. And that is how that perspective helped me. Number two of my kind of perspective mindset motivation to do these exercises I'm going to talk about is that my goal is no longer to think positively. It is to think realistically. And I'm going to explain why. That's why is because everyone above the age of 12 knows that life is not a bed of roses and usually by the age of 19 all of us have dropped our rose-colored glasses and we know that life can be times. So it's really important to understand that some of these really ambitious, positive, ideal thoughts we try to kind of mute our other thoughts with maybe won't work. For example, if I am anxious and worried about something when I sit down to study, say I'm worried about my long-term success suddenly, and I think, no, everything's going to be fine. I'm going to succeed no matter what. Obviously, I'm not going to believe that because I know that's not how the world works. I'm not going to succeed no matter what. But a more realistic thought would be, Maybe I won't realize all my goals and aspirations, but I'm confident I can, I can provide resources for myself to still live a decent life and a meaningful life to me personally. That is much more realistic, much more grounded, much more easier to believe and actually feels pretty nice to think of. So that was num mindset trick number two. And mindset trick number three, that is the last mindset trick, is know your mini tasks. Another YouTuber I used to watch called them mosquitoes. And I think it's a great description because they are like mosquitoes. They whirl around your head and they make you look, they make your mind scattered. They make you look everywhere but where you should be focusing on your study. And those mini tasks, they can be appointments you have to book, maybe appointments you have to cancel. They could be emails, laundry, maybe like those free memberships you forgot to cancel, uh, or like call Aunt Lisa on her birthday. I don't know. But those are all human day-to-day -day life tasks that just take away from our attention and that we usually don't even think about writing down because they seem so tri tri trivial but I would just recommend that you write them down and you just try to do a chunk of them before you start studying like just do like a whole chunk of them and you will feel like you got away with all these mini seemingly trivial but when added up very much exercises that i mean mini tasks that take away from your energy so that was all my mindset tricks and now we're going to move on to my tricks about how about the exercises no these are not my tricks <sighs> why did i say it was my tricks they are exercises based on the book based on exercises in the book and I'm gonna link the original Swedish exercises to you guys but they are in Swedish not everyone understands Swedish so I have taken the time to 
translate the exercises for you guys and added some questions myself from general information in the book and I'm going to go through the exercises with you so I really suggest you take some notes and I'm going to explain the general purpose of the exercises so let's just get right into it exercise number one um, the general purpose of exercise number one is to explore your automatic thoughts overthinking is often automatic thoughts in the way that you guys ask the questions in the way that you describe your problem so to say to me is that it's something you can't control and that that was why i thought the exercises in this book was so fitting i by my personal experience feel 100% my overthinking got controlled by these exercises. They won't change your life in a major way. To Just doing simple exercises won't have these extreme dramatic changes. It will probably be more of a journey and keep that in mind. Don't get discouraged just because you did the exercises once and you still struggle with overthinking. That is unfortunately not how emotional regulation works. It's more of a process, like I said. We're gonna begin with exercise number one that I put together from exercises, worksheets in the book and other general information in the book. So it's time to take forward the notebook and your pen. Realistic thinking, exercise number one, explore your automatic thoughts. This is based on worksheet one to three, link down below in the description in Swedish, but I will talk about it in English here. Section number one, the situation where you notice the negative automatic thought. When was it you noticed the thought? Probably when you sat down to study. Where were you when you noticed the thought? Maybe at home, maybe the library, maybe at school. Who were you with when you noticed the thought? Maybe with your friends, maybe you were studying alone. What were you doing when you noticed the thought? Maybe you were opening up a snack, I don't know. Section number two are questions about the automatic thought itself. Now, I will call it negative automatic negative thought but it doesn't have to be negative it doesn't even have to be thoughts that evoke strong emotions in you nor anxiety nor anything like that but still in the way you guys describe it it sounds like it is intrusive in some way and that's why I thought these exercises would be fitting section number two exercise number one is what thoughts were going through your head at the moment you notice this overthinking what did you think before entering the situation? The situation may be, uh, it's a specific situation, like going to a study group in the library, etc. What did you think when present in the situation? What did you think when you noticed your anxiety drop in mood because of the thought? Often by overthinking, it evokes some kind of uncomfortable emotion. It doesn't have to be anxiety, but some kind of uncomfortable emotion. So what, what did you think when you noticed this kind of changes in, probably changes in emotion? What is the worst case scenario that you thought of? Section number three is you approximate from a percentage of 1% to a full 100% how anxious each thought that you got uh, gives you. So you, the overthinking came, you wrote down all the thoughts, now rate how much anxiety each thought gives you from 1% to 100% where 0% is no anxiety, 25% is light anxiety, 50% is quite a bit of anxiety, 75% is a really high anxiety, 100% is the highest anxiety I've ever felt. Section number four, there are not many left. Other feelings. Try to identify any other feelings besides anxiety, fear, and a drop in mood. Section number five, physical symptoms. 
when you were afraid the worst case scenario would happen? Did you experience any physical sensations? So now we kind of, now we kind of want you to notice what kind of physical sensations did you get in this situation of overthinking? For example, did your heart rate become faster? Did you start sweating? Did you start shaking? Did you become red? Where did you feel these sensations? For example, your, maybe your hands start to feel numb or a pressure over your chest is kind of common. How did you notice these sensations? Maybe someone pointed it out to you like, oh, you're blushing or you're shaking uh, or, you know, your breathing becomes harder uh, and you notice it because your breathing becomes really stressed. Behavior. So the next section is you explore your behavior in the overthinking situation and questions you can ask yourself is at the time of the negative automatic thought, aware of it or not, looking back, did you do something to prevent the worst case scenario? Often by overthinking, if it's negative, you're thinking of a worst case scenario. Did you do anything to prevent the worst case scenario? An example would be you are about to have a presentation the next day and you think you will totally fail. Now that you have anxiety the night before, you stay up all night preparing, which is not the smartest move because you'll be tired. Or, yeah, so another behavior question you can ask yourself is, uh, did, you do something, did you do something in action to prevent other people from noticing your state of mind or drop in mood, anxiety because of automatic negative thought? Maybe try to sound extra happy or leave early from the study group, for example. Okay, so that was exercise number one. It was all about exploring the thought, facing the thought, and also addressing the thought. It was because when you try to push something away, it becomes stronger. That's how overthinking takes over you. That's how it becomes hard to control when you try to push it away. What are we doing here? We are doing the exact opposite. We are facing it. We are addressing it. We are going in depth, exploring everything in the overthinking, all the thoughts and everything around them. So just quickly, we went over the situation. We went over questions about the thoughts themselves. We rated the anxiety each thought gave us. We we identified other feelings, we identified physical symptoms, and we identified our behavior in the situation. So now that you kind of have explored the thought and gone in depth about the thought itself, and when you actually have realized your behavior, your physical symptoms, everything about around the overthinking situation, now it's time to challenge the overthinking. Yeah. We're not just going to push it away. We're actually going to challenge it. And that, it. This exercise will be based on that one because we will essentially be challenging the thoughts we got, uh, we explored uh, under exercise one. What I want you to do for exercise number two or what the exercise wants you to do is to choose only one automatic thought to challenge. Only one in the overthinking situation, all the negative thoughts you got I want you to extract one. Identify the thought that was kind of the strongest, the thought that you feel is in the center of the overthinking, the kind of the most, you know, problematic thought, the, what is it called? The seed of it all. So, a particularly strong thought. Section number one, challenge your perception of the worst case scenario. Questions you can ask yourself are, how would the worst case scenario unfold come to be? Already you have to reason like, okay, but yeah, that is the worst case scenario, but how would it happen? Like, how would it actually practically come to be? Then you can ask yourself, what would be the consequences of the worst case scenario? If it happened, how would I deal with it? 
would the worst case scenario be as awful as I imagined at first? Would the worst case scenario matter in a hundred years? Is the worst case scenario the end of the world? Then you move on to section number two and you approximate how much you believe your thought between zero to a hundred percent. How much do you believe this particular thought? Like how much do you believe in it? Section number three, you rate your other feelings, other feelings you get in relation to this thought, like the other feelings you wrote in exercise number one. You can use those and then you rate them, how much anxiety each like feeling gives you. And, and then here is the fun part. You kind of can present evidence in favor. In Now you're going to like... Now you're going to really like challenge the thought. First, we want to, we the book wants you to present evidence in favor. So you actually like pinpoint your reasoning. Like why what evidence do I have that would prove that this thought is true? Another question you can ask yourself is what makes me think that my negative automatic thought will happen? What actual tangible evidence do I have to show that my thought is correct? And in that way, you like actually get to examine, but what, what, are, like, what are the evidence for that this thought is true, that it will happen? What, what, are, what is it? You actually get to pinpoint your own reasoning to, have, to entertaining the thought. Then we have section number five, and that is evidence against. You put your thought to the test. And this is my absolute favorite part because I always imagine that it's my defense lawyer in court that is defending me, that I'm being, you know, that I'm being prosecuted and my defense lawyer is defending me. And your honor, there are too many circumstances out of my client's control to hold my client responsible for defending me and the questions you can ask or you can pretend that you are this is the uh, argument your defense lawyer is building up and that can be something like what arguments can you think of that contradict your thought is there maybe something that indicates that the thought may be not completely true is there anything that you have not accounted for in this context? Could you maybe have missed something that you should consider in this scenario? What do the facts say? Have the other instances where you have had this thought? Yeah, yeah. has there been other instances where you have had this same thought? What happened then? Has what you fear happened before, if it's something you fear? If so, are there any differences between now and then? Does it always happen, the thing you are thinking? Are there any lessons to draw from before, if this happened before? If you look back at this situation in five years, do you think you will look at it differently? Are there any alternate way to look at the situation? Are there any alternate explanations? Any like alternatives? Any other ways of thinking of this? How would another person look at the same situation? Because often other people are much more... They're much more lenient with us. We are often much more lenient with other people than we are with ourselves. I mean, I feel like that is the most general thing, that we are much harder on ourselves, we're much more mean to ourselves than others. If you didn't have anxiety or other negative emotions regarding this thought, would you think differently about it? What would you say to a friend in the same situation? And that way you get to imagine like, what would I say to my friend that I actually love? if they were presenting this exact same thought to me, what would I say to them? Maybe it's like, I'm going to become failure and I'll never amount up to anything good. <laughs> and then we have the last two sections. That is 
rate your feelings again. So now we you have like come up with a alternate an alternative, you know, you an alternative way to think. And now we kind of these last two sections you want to examine after having done all this intervention, what are my feelings now? And how strong are they? Identify your feelings and rate them now after having explored the thought and after having challenged it. Approximate how much you believe in your thought between 0 to 100% after having challenged it. So now you kind of look at the thought again after having explored it, after having challenged it, and you think, how much do I believe in it now? And that was it. Those are the exercises I've been doing and I've been having great effects with them. Nothing too dramatic, nothing too life-changing, but I can see, I can feel a change. And people tell me that I have a change. My sister has been saying this last few week weeks that I seem more awake, that I seem more present, that I seem like I'm listening more. And I think honestly because it's because I made up space in my mind. Now I just want to conclude this all by some just general I know some of you will still be thinking, well, I don't I just don't have the time. I don't have the time for this. I, I don't have the time. Then I want you to write down a pros and cons list of what are the pros of continuing like you are and like what are the cons. I mean the way you are continuing like right now with the overthinking that is taking away from your study time, is it really better to continue that way than putting some time on the exercises? I mean, that is taking time from you as well. And that is something to remember. I just think that I am somebody that is obsessed with my work. I think the exact same way. I just want to spend all my time doing my work, but actually only investing in your industrial self, it may not fulfill you in the way you think. And I have really realized that the past one and a half year when I worked the hardest I ever have in my whole life, and I'm in my mid-twenties now, and I just realized work can give me everything I need and want. There are other parts of myself that I do want to nurture. And I'm confident I can get there. I'm confident I can explore the nurture and expand the other parts of myself and who I am. And I guess that's my message to you and what I hope you will take away from this video. Thank you so, so much for watching. Thank you for your support. Please like if you enjoyed the video. It helps to kind of get me into the algorithm. And subscribe if you haven't already. If that's something, if you want to, you know, continue seeing content like this and kind of meeting me. So thank you so much, guys. I'll see you probably on the next live stream. Bye bye.